I think what makes me unique is my very complicated tapestry of a background. I know that's a bit boring because everyone says, oh, my background is so interesting and so different, but I hold three passports. Um, I've lived in four different countries. I speak two different languages fluently. Um, people often ask me where I'm from, and by that they usually mean where were you born, where did you grow up, um, where have you spent most of your life, and where are you living now? And you know, I try to answer those questions and they're all different, which is interesting. So, you know, I was born in Trinidad and I was raised in Jamaica. I was educated in the US and in France for a while before moving to the UK, which is where I've settled down. So I'm generally interpreted as English, but I don't think I'm English and I don't feel English, although I might be British, depending on how you define that kind of thing. And I think that's been incredibly useful for me. I've also managed to change allegiances many, many times in my life because of all this moving around. So I have, in the course of my life, I've been uh, an ethnic minority and an ethnic majority group member. I've been a political conservative and a political liberal. I've been part of a religious majority and an atheistic minority. I've been a lot of different things. And being able to understand and approach the world from all of those perspectives is incredibly useful. Um, it can be restrictive if all you've ever been is a majority or a minority group member. But if you've been both, you can see things a bit differently. I don't really have a role model or a person who I look to as inspiration. Um, I've always taken it as my duty to find my own path and to do my own things. So part of who I am is that I haven't done the thing I was supposed to do. So perhaps predictably, you know, the son of, of successful Caribbean parents, I was supposed to be a doctor and I'm not a doctor. I'm a psychologist, which many people think is kind of the same thing, but it's not. And um, that was a deliberate choice. I wanted to be myself and that's who I wanted to be. But I can say that along the way, a lot of people have contributed to my success and I've been really quite lucky. Um, really, all I've done my whole life is work really, really hard. And it's always been indiv individuals who've come in at one point or another and just kind of nudged me in one direction or another direction that made sure all that hard work was going somewhere. And that's incredibly important. And I can, I can say that my family was always a supportive family, a highly um, educational family, a family that really prized being smart and working hard and doing well at school. And most of the members of my family are properly addressed as Dr. West because that's just how we are. Um, but also there's people in my university, so like a man named Jim Crowder who just kind of casually said one day, why don't you apply for the Rhodes Scholarship? And I wasn't thinking of doing it, but he just kind of pushed me in that direction. And then I did, and then I got it. And other people who just said, why don't you apply for this, this award or apply to you know, work at this place? And that's always worked out for me. Um, so I really do appreciate that because working really hard is good, but if you're not working hard on the right thing or in the right direction, it's not necessarily that good. I think if businesses want to attract diverse talent, I think the first thing is, is businesses really want to do it, then they have to really want to do it, which sounds like a ridiculous tautology. But you can't just say, oh, it'd be nice to attract diverse talent. You have to want to do it like you'd want to increase your profits, or you'd have to want to do it like you'd want to boost your sales or want to boost your image. Because when businesses want to do those things, they get it done. And I think in the same sense, we have to want to make our, our talent pool more diverse. We have to want to make our organizations more diverse in the same sense. Um, and this comes out of meetings that I've seen where people have spoken very favorably about saying, oh, we need more women in this, or it'd be really nice to have more ethnic minorities in that, but they don't necessarily take any steps to get it done. So if you want to get something done, take the appropriate steps to get it done. A good way to start I think with anything, not just with things like diversity, but with anything, is to track what you do. So what are you good at? Where do you have the diversity? Where do you lack the diversity? Figure it out, get some numbers on it. Then be very, very clear about what you'd like to get done. So you have 30% women in management, how many do you want? Do you want 50? Do you want 70? Do you want 100? Pick a number and work towards that number and reward people who get you closer to that number. And don't reward people who don't get you closer to that number. Like that's, that is literally how we handle most other things. So I think if, if diversity is a goal, make it a goal, make it a real goal and actually get it done. And I think part of the problem many people have is that they see diversity as being at odds with other things. So they think, oh, we'll get diversity 
but that means we'll have to cut into our profits or but that means we'll have to accept substandard talent. And I think that's a really unfortunate, pervasive mythology. It's just not true. If anything, um, so if, if you know anything about history or about social psychology or about the way that things have been done from most of contemporary history, it's it's clearly the case that people have always been promoted even if they're not necessarily as good because they fit certain criteria. That there's, there's a legacy system or a, or a daddy's system or a whatever else system or nepotism or call it what you want, including just straightforward prejudice. But there are systems wherein other people can get promoted without necessarily being as good. By forcing a level playing field, by forcing the diversity, forcing people to, to have to compete fairly, you're actually improving your talent pool. You're not detracting from it. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't paint those as going in the opposite direction. They're actually normally going in the same direction.